Nathaniel Gavronsky here and I'm in Pierce, South Dakota. I'll talk to you a little bit about the history of the, uh, the Dakota Territory and the city itself. All right, now the territory of the Dakotas was actually formed on March 2nd of 1861 in the last two days of President Buchanan's term just before uh, incoming President Abraham Lincoln took office. As soon as Abraham Lincoln took office, he selected his ho hometown uh, doctor, Dr. William Jane, to become the first territorial governor of the Dakota Territory. Now, the very first capital of the Dakotas was a, a, in a, a little town in the southeast corner called the Yanktown. Now, Yanktown was uh, initially founded by uh, John Blair Smith Todd. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it should because he was the cousin of Mary Todd Lincoln, the first lady of the United States. The capital was in Yanktown from 1861 until 1883 when it moved to Bismarck, the current capital of North Dakota. On November 2nd, 1889, the Dakota Territory split into North and South and they both became the 39th and 40th state. However, because there was some animosity between about which state got what, they decided to switch the paperwork so no one actually knows which one is which. And it was done by design. Now, when South Dakota, South Dakota became a state, they initially selected Pierre to become the, the, the state capital, but it was only meant to be temporary until they made a decision on just where they wanted the capital to be. The city was challenged multiple times for the, for the title of, of state capital, and by 1904 it had been chosen as the permanent site of the state capital. Now, Pierre was this area was initially settled in 1817 as a as Fort Pier, and it was actually uh, founded on the west side of the Missouri River. Uh, an interesting thing about that is when they were settling this area, they found a lead plate that was left there on March 30th of 1743 by two French agents, Francois and Louis Joseph uh, Gaultier de la Verendie. They left this lead plate claiming this area for France, and it became part of the, the Louisiana, which changed and Italian terrazzo tile. There were over 60 Italian laborers that, that did the interior work of the building. And because they weren't actually able to sign their names to their work, they were each allowed to place a blue stone. Now, 50 of these stones have been found. The remaining have not yet been located, but it's believed that most of them are probably now hidden behind additional walls, car carpeting, and other changes since the capital uh, was originally constructed. The dome is made out of solid copper. Um, because of the age, it has turned to the, to the also uh, you know, blackish color we have today. Um, one of the more interesting hist uh, historical factors about this become uh, as, the, as a state in, in history is that there was a speaker of the house by the name of George uh, Penny and he voted the wrong way too many times for the other legislators at the house and he had to request uh, armed guards to be sent to the speaker's chamber for protection because the other legislators had threatened to throw him out of a window. He later resigned but was not able to completely escape his fate as he was uh, later thrown out of a window out of a local, local tavern here in Pierre. The, the city a pier and the, the Ford Pier were named after a, a famous fur trapper named Pierre uh, Chante. He was uh, from St. Louis, from a very prominent French fur trapping family. And that's where the name Pierre or Pierre comes from. The, the, the Metropolitan
metropolitan area consists of all of Stanley and all of Hume counties. So where the Fort Pier is in uh, Stanley County on the west of the Missouri and the city of Pier is on the east side of the Missouri and the, capital, the county seat of Hugh County. It is the second least populated uh, state capital in the country uh, and is also the only capital not to be serviced by a major U.S. highway. Uh, the, the capital building is laid along a kind of in a side of a valley and there are some great views of the capital building from other high points in the city. Um, normally at used the capitals are a way of viewing the, the rest of the city with the outlying hills and vantage points the capital really lays into its surroundings. It's a very, very picturesque scene if you ever get a chance to come visit out here. It's about three hours away from uh, Rapid City and Mount Rushmore and uh, Crazy Horse. And it's uh, a couple of hours uh, west of, of Sioux City along, uh, you know, just north of, eight, of uh, I-90. Uh, it's got this great pond here, which is attributed in honor to uh, veterans. Uh, from South Dakota and the governor's mansion is just on the other side of the pond and the really cool thing about the governor's mansion here is that it's very very approachable and what I mean by that is that there's no fence there's no there doesn't appear to be any security and there's a front door and a, well, with, well, with a welcome mat um, the current governor of the, of the state uh, Christy Noam has said she's not gonna put a fence up so we'll see how long that lasts if she once she moves on uh, to most likely the White House very shortly but it's a beautiful brand new uh, governor's mansion that appears to be very, very accessible. The grounds here are absolutely beautiful and there are statues of all kinds of people from the Dakota history uh, all over the, uh, the city of Pierre. It's a beautiful little town. Um, I kind of have to admit it's probably one of my favorites because it feels more of like a, like a small little community that people are very, very proud of. Uh, there seems to be a lot of camaraderie here about the, the pride of the city and so it, it makes it into a great atmosphere, a place you want to come spend some time. The capital inside is very, very beautiful and all the staff and people I've met in the building are very nice. It's very accessible, all the doors are open, you can go talk to everybody. It's actually probably one of the most hospitable places I've come across so far doing these, these videos. So I'm going to be moving on to doing North Dakota next. I'll talk to you a little bit more about the split between North and South Dakota and why there was contention about how they were let, let bringing states into the Union after the Civil War. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, please like and, su and subscribe and share the videos so I can get more people interested into the history of their local areas. My name is Nathaniel Gavronsky from the great city of Pierce, South Dakota.